Perfect. Hi, this is Richard from Hello Happy English Online, and I'm here today to talk to you about a very special day that is coming up. That's right, Valentine's Day. So today I'm going to be talking about all things love and romance. Look, I even dressed for the occasion. So, when is Valentine's Day? Well. It happens on the 14th of February every year. Now, this is a day that has become more and more popular in recent years. Some people don't celebrate Valentine's Day because they think it's a commercial celebration. It was created by the flower industry so that they could make another occasion in the year when you have to buy flowers and they can make some money. But I think most people get into the spirit of Valentine's Day. Now, it could be a great opportunity for you to celebrate your love with your partner, or it could be a good opportunity if you're single. It could be a great chance for you to really tell that person you're interested in exactly how you feel. So today, I would like to talk to you about two scenarios. One, if you're single, and two, if you're in a relationship, I'm going to help everybody today. So firstly, if you're single, well, maybe you've had your eye on somebody. This is an expression in English, to have your eye on somebody, to be interested in someone. And we can use it in this romantic context. Maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a co-worker, or just maybe somebody you know. Well, as romance is in the air today, this could be a perfect opportunity for you to really tell that person how you feel about them. But how do you do it? It's quite scary going up to that person and talking to them and asking them out. Well, maybe on Valentine's Day you can follow a different tradition because on Valentine's Day it's very popular to send a Valentine's Day card. You can find one in any shop, any supermarket, any card shop. What do you put in the Valentine's Day card? Well, maybe you write some kind of personalized message about how you feel. Maybe you write a poem. That's quite popular to write a poem in a Valentine's Day card. In this way, well, you really tell that person how you feel about them. But on Valentine's Day, in a Valentine's Day card, sometimes people write their name, but sometimes they don't. They leave it mysterious, maybe just a big question mark at the bottom of the card. Now, why would people do this? Well, maybe it is a co-worker or a, a good friend and you don't want to ruin that relationship. So if you leave it mysterious, hopefully, let's cross our fingers, hopefully that person thinks it's from you and then maybe they'll ask you about it. But if they don't think it's you, and they're not interested in you, well, they don't know that you sent the card, so there's no embarrassment. So some people prefer to leave things a little bit mysterious on Valentine's Day. So, look, if you're single, you and you have your eye on someone, what better day than Valentine's Day? to tell that person or to let that person know how you feel. Seriously, what's the worst thing that could happen? There's nothing bad that can happen from it. If, uh, if they say no, they say no, there's no problem. Now, I also want to talk about if you're in a relationship. Well, if you're in a relationship, you need to put some thought and some preparation into Valentine's Day, especially you gentlemen. Now. Women are generally, I think so, I think women are generally more romantic than men. But guys, this is an opportunity for you on this day to show your lady how you really feel. And I am here to help you. So firstly, what do you need to think about in preparation? You need to think about a gift. Now, it depends on your budget. Don't worry, I have advice for every budget. Number one. Jewelry is very popular. Maybe a nice necklace or a nice bracelet or a nice ring or some earrings. Jewelry. Everybody, every woman loves jewelry, guys. It could be a good one for you. 
But the thing you absolutely have to buy is flowers. Now, I'm a guy. I know, they're expensive. Yes, they're going to die in three days. Yes, they're a waste of money. But women love flowers, especially on Valentine's Day. And you are expected to buy flowers on Valentine's Day, gentlemen. Now, in Europe or in the UK, it doesn't matter how many flowers. I know in Russia there's a thing. If it's an even number or an odd number, it means a different thing. In the UK, just buy any flowers. It's no problem. Any number of flowers. But you should probably buy roses. Roses are the flower of Valentine's Day. Chocolate is always a popular option as well. A nice box of chocolates and a Valentine's Day card, I think, would be quite nice. Maybe with a personal message, maybe even a poem, if you're feeling creative. But nowadays, Valentine's Day gifts are changing a little bit. Maybe it's not the traditional romantic flowers card chocolates. Maybe it's becoming other things. So if you know your partner, find out what they like, buy a gift for them. So guys, think about a Valentine's Day present. But ladies... This doesn't mean that you don't have to do anything. Look, Women's Day is next month. Maybe in the past, Valentine's Day was women were not really expected to buy anything. But now we're in the 21st century. Ladies, you should buy your man a gift on Valentine's Day. Now, maybe not flowers. Chocolates are appreciated, but I don't know if flowers are so appreciated for men. But I'm sure you can think of something they would like, and you can buy it for them. In fact, nowadays, most couples, they generally agree on a price for a gift beforehand. So they say, okay, let's spend 20 pounds or 50 pounds on each other. So there's usually some agreement between that. So you've bought the present, but now you need to think about the date. What are you going to do on Valentine's Day? Well, there are so many possibilities to be romantic, and I have some great ideas for you. Now, the most popular activity is a meal in a restaurant. It's classic, nice meal in a restaurant. However, this can be quite difficult. Try to book in advance because everybody has the same idea as you on Valentine's Day. So really try to book in advance if you can. Now. You don't always have to spend so much money on Valentine's Day. Maybe a home-cooked dinner. Cook, Gentlemen, cook for your woman at home. Women love a man who can cook. So, show your talents off in the kitchen. Alternatively, there's a cinema. Some people go to the cinema. Or perhaps there's something to do in your city. Or, and this is the good one, If you have a lot of money and you're really romantic, maybe take your partner on a small holiday. Why don't you come to my city, Paris, the most romantic city in the world? Paris does actually get a lot of couples who come to the city for Valentine's Day because there are so many things to do here. We've got the opera, we've got the theatre, we've got some of the best restaurants in the world. Lots of people do activities like they take a boat ride down the river, or you could simply walk along the banks of the River Seine. But by far the most popular activity for couples who come to Paris on Valentine's Day is a visit to the Eiffel Tower. Now, why might somebody come to the Eiffel Tower for Valentine's Day. Well, firstly, you get a chance to see this beautiful city and to see all of the landscape of the beautiful city, the panorama. You can also buy champagne on the top of the Eiffel Tower, so that's quite nice. But also, a lot of people go there to pop the question. Now, this is an expression we use in English, to pop the question, and it means to ask the very important question. Yes, that one very important question to propose to somebody, to ask that person if they want to marry you. And a lot of people do it in romantic places like the Eiffel Tower. Now, 
This is normally, gentlemen, again, this is normally the responsibility of you. You are expected to ask the woman to get to uh, for their hand in marriage. However, we do have a tradition in England, in the UK, where on a leap year, now a leap year is once every four years when we have an extra day, the 29th of February. Uh, the next one is actually in 2024. In Britain, we say that the tradition is that during that year, the woman asks the man. So your next time is 2024 ladies so how are you going to propose well gentlemen before you propose again you need to do some preparation for this you need to find a ring preferably a diamond ring if you can now i did some research before this and they say you should spend one year's salary on a ring which is very expensive but if this person is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with it sounds like a good deal to me. Now, when it comes time to pop the question, what do you need to do? Well, you need to get down on one knee. You need to get down on one knee, take that person's hand, tell them how you feel, ask them if they want to marry you. Hopefully, they will say yes. And if they say yes, you need to put the ring on their fourth finger of their left hand. So the fourth finger of the left hand so good luck i am crossing my fingers for you that they will say yes i'm sure they will you're a great person and this actually leads us to a really interesting subject which is not necessarily about valentine's day but about the consequence of valentine's day which is weddings how do weddings work in britain well really you have a few different choices for a wedding now, the most popular one is a church wedding, or what we call a white wedding. This is in a church presided over by a priest, and this is the most famous one, where the bride is going to wear a nice white dress, and there's going to be flowers in the church, and actually, to introduce the woman, the bride, we call her, normally her father walks down to the front of the church with her. Now, most people get married on a Saturday, which can mean that we talked about earlier, if you go to a restaurant on Valentine's Day, maybe you need to book in advance. Well, if you want a church wedding on a Saturday, you really have to book in advance, maybe more than a year in advance it's really popular really expensive as well now most people would like to have a church wedding but if you're not very religious or if you've been married before because you can only get married in a church once in most countries well maybe you have what we call a registry office wedding a registry office is a government building and this is a simple ceremony it's a similar one to the wedding ceremony in the church however it's going to be a government official who does the ceremony and you get married in a legal sense by this government official. Now, whether you get married in a church or you get married in a registry office, well, people generally have a reception ceremony after the wedding ceremony. Now, a reception ceremony usually happens in somewhere like the big banquet hall of a hotel or a big restaurant area, private area of a restaurant. And this is where all the guests, they go and there's a huge meal. Now, normally at the end of the meal or before the meal, there are various speeches, speeches by the groom, the man, we call him the groom, speeches by the bride, the woman. We also have a speech by the best man, who is the groom's friend, who does some things during the ceremony. There's lots of pressure on the best man to be very funny in his speech. We also maybe have a speech by the father of the bride as well. Then everybody has a meal, and after the meal, there is normally some kind of party. Maybe there's a band or a DJ, people are dancing, maybe there's some alcohol involved as well. And at the end of the night, the couple leave the party, normally to go on their honeymoon. Now, the honeymoon is the holiday you have after you have just become married. 
it's very popular for people to go on honeymoon in very nice places. Places like Mauritius or the Maldives or the Seychelles or Polynesia. Some paradise on the beach where this new couple can enjoy themselves. And we have a tradition in the UK. When the couple leave the ceremony, normally we attach various things to the car. Normally some metallic things like some cans to the car. So when the car is driving away, it makes lots of noise and everybody's waving and there's a big ceremony that happens. Now, in recent years, it has become more popular to do what we call a destination wedding. Now, a destination wedding is when you decide to mix the wedding and the honeymoon together and you go and you have a wedding in Mauritius or in Greece or on the beach in Italy or in the Caribbean. Maybe you have a less, maybe you have less people who come to your wedding. Maybe it's just your close friends and your immediate family. But a lot of people are starting to do that nowadays. So that's another option for you, let's say. Also, there are many people who do anti-Valentine's Days. They don't want to take part in the Valentine's Day tradition. There have even been some anti-Valentine's Day events set up in different cities where they don't do anything romantic and maybe there's some, something happening in a bar or in a theatre. But most people seem to get in with the tradition of things. I also wanted to give you some cheap gift solutions for Valentine's Day. Now, we mentioned jewellery and flowers and chocolates and taking your partner to Paris. But remember, in English, we say it's the thought that counts. It's not the money that counts. It's the thought that counts. And why not make your partner a mixtape? Now, a mixtape was actually something we used to do a long time ago. And it's when you would get a cassette, remember, when we used to listen to music on cassette. And you maybe would put your favorite songs on the cassette and you would give it to your partner. Now, maybe nowadays it's it's done more often on things like Spotify or some kind of app where you have all the music and you can make a playlist. You can send it to your other. But like I said, it's the thought that counts. It's not the money you spend. Or why not find a romantic movie to watch at home or a romantic comedy to watch? My personal recommendation, I would recommend the film Hitch with Will Smith. Now, to get hitched, this is an expression we use in English. It's a slang expression to mean to get married, to get hitched. And there's a film called Hitch with Will Smith. He plays a date doctor and it's funny and it's romantic. It's a perfect couples movie, especially on Valentine's Day. So maybe that could be a good one for you. So whatever you do on Valentine's Day, just remember it's a nice, fun occasion that happens in the middle of winter when it's all very cold and there's nothing else to do. So it doesn't cost so much money, but it might mean a lot to that special person in your life or that person you've had your eye on, maybe they'll become that special person in your life. So, if you haven't already planned something for Valentine's Day, get planning now. You have lots of advice from me. I hope that helps. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.